Health Coaching, Wikipedia Audio Health coaching is the use of evidence-based skillful conversation, clinical interventions, and strategies to actively and safely engage clients-patients in health behavior change. Health coaches are certified or credentialed to safely guide clients and patients who may have chronic conditions or those at moderate to high risk for chronic conditions. Health coaching is based on evidence-based clinical interventions such as motivational interviewing to facilitate behavior change, the trans-theoretical model of change, goal-setting, active listening, aggregation and trending of health outcome metrics, and prevention. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention define wellness as the degree to which one feels positive and enthusiastic about life. Wellness coaching is a process that facilitates healthy, sustainable behavior change by challenging a client to develop their inner wisdom, identify their values, and transform their goals into action. Wellness coaching draws on the principles from positive psychology and appreciative inquiry, and the practices of motivational interviewing and goal setting. Overview Health coaches are not licensed to prescribe diets. Dietitians are the only nutrition professionals to be regulated by law, and are governed by an ethical code to ensure that they always work to the highest standard. Minimum requirement is a BSc Hans in Dietetics, or a related science degree with a postgraduate diploma or higher degree in Dietetics. In 13 states, it is illegal to perform individualized nutrition counseling unless licensed or exempt. Effectively only RDS are eligible for licensure. The health coaching model follows a process. The process begins with engagement. Engagement and building trust with the client is established by building rapport. Many factors are included in this process. Essential traits to building rapport include, genuineness, eye contact, good energy, warmth, good quality of voice, a feeling of connectedness, being comfortable and relaxed in the exchange, mindful listening, being supportive and positive body language and physical gestures. Rapport is fundamental not only in the initial coaching session, but also in each coaching session thereafter. Although rapport is important, a coach may want to avoid becoming too close with client. Becoming too close to a client can create a barrier for a successful coaching process by being too emotionally attached, having a personal agenda and falling into assumptions based on personal relationships or experience. Once a coach has established rapport, Building strong communication strategies is essential. An effective tool used in health and wellness coaching and other clinical work is motivational interviewing. Motivational interviewing is a process used in psychotherapy, social work, medicine, addiction, and other fields. It aims to raise clients' awareness of problems and possibilities while reducing their ambivalence about change. Motivational interviewing is also characterized by a focus on the present rather than the past. The emphasis is on the communication that is conducted with clients, concentrating on internal motivating factors and an exploration into individual core values and goals. This allows the client to express their desire to change their lifestyle and identify it themselves rather than having it come from the health coach. A wellness vision is a creative statement by the client that reveals his slash her highest potential and can include physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and financial realms of their life. A new life vision empowers one to see new possibilities along with a specific and clear direction. It allows a client to activate their imagination and then think, feel, speak, and ultimately see the manifestation of their highest potential. 
A wellness vision is a tool a health coach uses to help the client move to new levels of well-being by connecting the client to their own truth and wisdom that is held within. Guiding the agenda and goal setting is a collaborative behavior change technique used between the coach and the client. During the motivational interviewing process, after strengths, values, and desires are determined and the client's vision is set in place, specific goals are safely set so the client is able to move in the direction of his slash her newly formed desires. Goals promote behavior change through a collaborative process, which includes the coach making a plan to track and evaluate progress. The coach can help the client focus on the success the client has had, even if goal is not yet achieved. Evaluating strengths and what is successful helps the client move forward. Positive feedback helps the client progress and move through any negative self-talk, ambivalence, resistance, and other hurdles. Although self-regulation is a powerful behavior change tool, the client may lapse. When the coach promotes the principles of positive psychology and goal setting through the motivational interviewing process, the coach helps the client continue to improve self-efficacy, which supports behavior change. Process There is no evidence that health maintenance organizations are using health coaches for their health care services. Social workers are skilled in the field of helping individuals overcome obstacles that inhibit their growth potential. Both coaching and social work fall under the mental health field. Coaching and social work have similar elements. Both practices rely on motivational interviewing. Both are focused on the client being the expert, and both work with the client without judgment allowing the client to be in control. The essential difference between social work and coaching is that social work is more oriented to the client's relationship to community life and social ethics, whereas coaching is focused on an individual's personal dreams, desires, and goals. The traditional approach to patient teaching and education is one that directs information at the patient. In essence, the goal is to have the patient do the things prescribed for them to do. Healthcare professionals have the knowledge about disease processes, exercise guidelines, special diets, and medications that must be imparted to the patient and caregivers in many forms, booklets, pamphlets, audio CDs, and the like. Many formal health coaching programs are now being offered through institutions of higher learning such as Duke Integrative Medicine, Georgetown University, and the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Several studies have shown health coaching to be effective in improving various aspects of health. One study on type 2 diabetes concludes that after six months, Individuals who were coached showed improvement in medication adherence. Coaching had a positive effect on patients' knowledge, skill, self-efficacy, and behavior change while a non-coached control group did not show any improvement. Additionally, coached participants with a hemoglobin A1c over 7% showed significant improvement in A1c. A study on coronary heart disease indicated that patients in a coaching program achieved a significantly greater change in total cholesterol of 14 mg-dl than the non-coached patients, with a considerable reduction in LDLC. Those involved in the coaching program showed improvements in secondary outcomes such as weight loss, increased exercise, improved quality of life, less anxiety, and improvement in overall health and mood. Another study shows that telephonic coaching is an effective program for assisting individuals with self-efficacy and weight loss. Confidence to lose weight increased from a baseline of 60% to 71% at 3 months, 76% at 6 months and 79% at 12 months.
The average body mass index significantly decreased during this interactive coaching study. Average baseline was 32.1%, and then documented at 3 months, 6 months, and 12 months. Establish Relationship Motivational Interviewing A study on tobacco cessation concluded that after 12 months, the coached participants had a 32% quit rate compared to 18% for non-participants. Those that participated in the program, who acknowledged that they were ready for change, had the highest rate of quitting at 44%. Additionally, 11% of participants who did not quit reported reduction in tobacco use. This is considered a positive outcome because other studies have shown that when individuals reduced their tobacco usage, they find increased motivation to quit entirely in the future. Wellness Vision Guiding the Agenda and Goal Setting Intersection with Related Disciplines Social Work Patient Education Efficacy